Welcome back guys to another Zero DTE video and today Ernie's going to be talking about continuous contracts so make sure you stay tuned. If you're interested in becoming a pro trader check out the link in the description where you can find Ernie's education platform. Enjoy guys. A question about volume profiles and especially working with futures. I was looking at ES and on TradingView, ES1 exclamation point was the sort of the consolidated symbol for the multiple futures, right? As they roll. But ES1, I noticed that yeah, ES1 is their current front contract, what's called the continuous contract. And it looks like today that TradingView decided to move their ES1 to the September contract. So it changed the pricing by 50 points, right? It, on, on their, yes, on their, on their continuous contract. So if mm -hmm. I were to create another chart here, so this is the continuous contract. This is what it would look like. So all this data down here is their June contract. Then they decided to roll to the September contract. And so that, that's why it looks like there's a big gap here. If I were to look at just the June contract, because it's not over yet. So if I were to look at just the June contract, you'll see that there's no big gap up. It, it just takes that price and keeps on going because it's still the same contract. I'll just show the difference there and there. We can bring in a little bit more detail if we want. Same exact thing. Same thing, but two different ways to look at it. One is the a continuous contract, which is a consolidated contract. It's trying to bridge one quarter expiring quarter to the next front running contract. Now, TradingView, I think wrongly, takes their ES1 contract and moves it way, way too soon. Because normally what you want to do is you want to move this when volume is about even on the two. So if I were to take a look at the volume of uh, both and look at the difference between the June act. See, as far as Think of Swim is concerned, this is still the active contract, the June contract, because it says active. In other words, that's the front contract. Here's the September contract. And if we come over and look at the volume, there's no real good reason why TradingView should be switching this over yet. The, the volume is still clearly on the side of the June contract, but that's an anomaly. That's what they chose to do. Everybody has their own idea of a continuous contract and when that role should happen. That's trading views. Theirs is clearly way more aggressive and way too early. I'm not going to say it's wrong, but it is wrong. They can do whatever the hell they want. Uh, and the futures trader, we typically wait because if you're holding a long-term position and you need to roll over to the next contract because the current contract that you're holding is going to expire, but you want to maintain a position, then you have to roll at some point. And you're going to roll when you think that you have an advantage from a liquidity point of view so that you can minimize the amount of slippage on that roll. Because there's always slippage when you exit your position and then enter a new position. The slippage is typically the difference between the bid and the ask. And if you have a big position on, say, hundreds of contracts, every tick or point costs you money when you roll. So rolling is a relatively expensive and Endeavor might cost you, you know, if you have a hundred contracts and you have say a point and a half of slippage and maybe not a point and a half, let's say that you have a total of on the ES, you probably have a total of a point, maybe half a tick or two ticks on either side. That's worst case scenario. So one tick and each tick is worth $50. And if you have a hundred contracts, that's $5,000 cost just to move to the, to the September contract as a, someone who's holding these positions. And, and you do that, you try to do that at an opportune time at, at an optimal time when you think that you you can minimize that slippage or that tick, the, the number of ticks that it's going to take for you that you're going to have to pay for because of the bid ask spread. Typically on the E mini, there's about a half a tick of slippage. So half a tick on either side would be just half a point. So that would be half a point. So my $5,000 figure there for 100 contracts is probably a little overstated. It would probably end up costing about $2,500, $3,000, somewhere around there plus fees, but it's still a cost. And so everybody has like their own idea of what's the most efficient way to do that. Sometimes they try to get fancy and put limit orders in and try to capture it on the same tick and experience no cost, but that's extremely rare. It's chancy because you could end up getting two ticks or three ticks of slippage that way. So that's what most future traders are dealing with when we're switching. From our point of view, it really doesn't matter because we're only trading the June contract right to the very end of its life cycle, which is next Friday, right? But from our charting point of view, we have to deal with the inconsistencies of how a platform is going to show us the pricing. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button below. If there's any questions that you might have for Coach Journey, make sure you leave them in the comment section. Thanks, guys.